when doing water quality, you need to have be near the stream somewhere. You need to have a flat location to do your stuff. I will, if I know what I'm going to do and I'm going to use some test kits, I'll have them like set out ready to go. I like to use the boxes as a table. And I also, um, I usually only, I don't use everything. I use the dissolved oxygen kit and I use thermometers. The first thing I do is I talk to the kids. I say, well, here we are at the water quality station. And I say, I think, I think y'all know about what water is. We'll talk about what quality is. And so I just talk, I ask, I'm really into words myself and I like people to understand what words mean. And so I say, what does the word quality mean? And give me examples of where, how you use the word quality for anything, you know, uh, talking about clothing or your shoe, you know, people like kids like to talk about sneakers, you know, things like that. So I'll talk about what quality means. It's kind of the, the, the defining characteristics. You can have good quality, bad quality, and it depends who you're relating it to, you know, there's a lot of uh, kids who walk around with really ripped jeans. Well, some grown-ups might say that's bad quality clothes, but the kids will say, oh, that's great quality. That's what I want. <laughs> I love to have my jeans shredded up. That's cool. Air quality. <laughs> and air quality is a big thing because all the kids are hearing about that now. What's it, what is it when, when you hear people talking about bad air quality, what does that mean? Oh, that's when we go out of smoke. And what's it, when we have good air quality? So that's a measurement. And what are they measuring? A lot of kids will know they're measuring the particles or things like that. So talk about that. And then, okay, so here we're gonna talk about water quality. And so I just asked them, what do you think uh, good and bad, you know, what are the qualities of water? You know, you know, if you're taking a bath, what are the qualities you're looking for in your bath water? Oh, I want it warm, I want it this. You know, I like bubble bath. Okay, what are the qualities of water if you're talking about a stream? Do you want it nice and warm and full of bubbles? Not necessarily. So, so depending on what use or better, you know, what is the usage of the water, you're going to have different qualities and they're going to be seen as good or bad. You don't want your stream to be warm and bubbly with soapy bubbles, but you do want your bath maybe to be that way. Okay, the other thing I usually do since we're near the creek, as I say, you are all scientists. You're full of tools everywhere on your body. You have eyes, you have hands, you have ears. We're gonna use some of those tools. And I talk about how one of the tools with, uh, one of the qualities of water we, go, we get into is temperature. And because when we're talking about the bath water, we're talking about temperature. And then if they've already been like to their salmon, we'll say, I'll say, well, salmon, what is salmon like? Do they want bath water or do they want cold water? Oh, they want cold water. <laughs> so I'll say, we're going to use one of our instruments and we're going to do some measurements. Take your instruments. Okay. I have the kids touch, touch the water. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm using my instruments <laughs> and I'll say, give me a description of the quality. And so they'll say whatever they say. And then I say, that's great. And then I'll say, we're going to use a little more um, precise instrument. And we'll just, I mean, some kids don't even know what a thermometer is. And some kids don't know what the units are. So depending, you have to make sure you know what the units are. I mean, some kids will have. So this one, and sometimes some of the thermometers are Celsius and some of them are Fahrenheit. So that really confuses things. So you might want to look ahead well, and decide. Like, that, that's, that, that's intentional. Right. Yeah. Like, somebody gets 18, somebody gets 64. Right. What's the difference? Oh, okay. Yes. Right. So, so, but you need to be aware of it either way. <laughs> um, so yeah, so all these things, this, you know, even with middle schoolers, um, it's all needs to be reminded, you know. So then I'll usually have, yes, Greg? This, uh, I, we might want to start with a little bit of like a, a, a safety talk or a oh, yeah. talk because the first time, the, in recent years, we got a whole bunch of brand new thermometers and the water was a little deep. So the first thing the kids went over and was like, ooh, I dropped it. And it's like, I didn't think I'd have to say, hold on to it or, <laughs> you know, kids fall in. So just, you know, you never know what you're going to encounter, but just. Because yeah. these are nice glass ones. So yeah, and also 
if depending on where you are, this is pretty safe here, but if you're by the moving water and uh, make sure that people are, they have to stay on the shore and not fall, you know, you're not having them do this right in current. So using the instrument, I'll usually, I'll usually have around a few of the kids, you know, three or four kids take a, a thermometer and take a, you know, stick it, I say, hold on to it, hold it in the water for a minute. And they just have to, you know, sit here like this, you know, they'll have a partner and then, okay, now read your, you know, read your thermometer and then share, they'll share, what did you get? And we can talk about the units because if they just say, you know, 74, you know, or 18, I say, you have to tell me the units because that doesn't, the number doesn't mean anything without the unit. Um, okay. And engage people because even older kids, you know, you just kind of get people into their senses. I'll also have them look, use their, let's use our other instruments, our eyes. And what do you see with, you know, I'll ask them to te observe the water, you know, is it moving? Is it moving fast? Is it moving over rocks? Is it making, do you see bubbles in the water? And what does that mean? How did the bubbles get there? And what do the bubbles indicate? Do you have any hypotheses? Talk about the scientific method. What's the hypothesis? Um, and, and all this stuff is just getting people engaged and you don't have to wow them with all your mighty knowledge of, 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 uh, of facts and figures. Um, it's pretty, pretty basic. Okay. So what do we got here? We have 15 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, so then I talk about, I often spend a lot of time talking about, uh, temperature and then the relationship with temperature and oxygen is very closely uh, bound. And one of the things I like to talk about is that cold water holds more oxygen. So when you have an ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem with all kinds of animals in the cold water, they are more able to breathe. The, the quality of the water allows them to breathe more easily. Just like when you have bad air quality and it feels, it feel, you can feel it. If they have poor water quality and a lack of oxygen, they, those animals are, are impacted by that too. Whether it's macroinvertebrates or fish, I often will play a game with kids to kind of demonstrate what, and I'm not going to do it with us because it's a little close, but what I do is I say, um, I get a group of kids, I get all the kids and I draw out like three of them and say, you are going to be oxygen model, uh, ox oxygen molecules. And the rest of you are going to be water molecules. And sometimes I can, depending on who, how old they are, I talk about H2O and O2, whatever. And I say, when water is cold, the molecules are moved. This is how I learned how oxygen is incorporated into water. When the molecules of water are cold, they're slow moving. And I say, think about a boiling kettle, a, a boiling pot of water. Those molecules of water are really moving and they're turning into vapor, okay? When they're cold, they're moving, the water molecules are moving slowly. And so what I do is I kind of get a scrum of the water molecules and I say, hey, water molecules, move fast, be hot. And they're all like bumping and I make some, you know, some little boundaries there and they're and I say, okay, water molecules, you're really cold, move slow, slow, cold water molecules. And so they move real slow. And then I throw the oxygen in. So, and I have the oxygen in there when they're, when it's hot and when it's cold. And then what happens is that the cold, the cold molecules allow the water, allow the oxygen molecules to kind of be in there. 
But when there's fast moving kids, they keep, I say, what happened to you oxygen molecules when the water was hot and fast? It was, oh, I was getting knocked out all over. Boom, 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 boom. And so that's what's happening actually in the stream. As the water warms up, that bounces out those oxygen molecules. It doesn't hold on to the oxygen. So I integrate oxygen and temperature a lot. And I keep talking about the shade. And one of the things I also like to say, it, um, the, the shade doesn't cool the water, but it keeps the sun from making the water hotter, which to me is, is an important difference because it's not refrigerating the water. It's just keeping the, I say, you know, on a hot day, you would rather be under a shady tree, not getting any hotter than, than, uh, than standing out in the sun.